Hello everybody, I just thought I'd talk about some recent pickups, in fact some I've just picked up Burkwise from the charity shop today um, A Blu-ray I've just had delivered this morning and watched Finished watching literally two or three minutes ago um, So that Blu-ray is from Indicator, which is one of my favourite UK labels The swimmer, Stan Burt Lancaster Now I remember watching this when I was 16 year oldish on late night BBC and it made an impact then but by god it makes an impact now there's um, the great Jordan Day says on one of my favourite movie podcasts the movies that made me you're not the same person you were when you first watched the film as you are when you watch it again and that's true with all media whether you reread a book listen to music again years later but yeah this this really blew my mind um, and as I say I don't think I've seen it since I was about 15 I knew um, Indicator had it coming out, so I pre-ordered it because I've been wanting to watch it again for a long time. I know certain channels in the UK, um, I think Paramount, before it turned into Paramount Plus and stuff, have shown it. Uh, it just, it, it's a beautiful film and it's a great performance from Lancaster, um, 1968, so he was, he was knocking on a bit and I think he produced it with his film company at the time. Uh, directed by Frank Perry, who made some extraordinary films and isn't really known. Um, it's based on a John Cheever story, one of the great American short story writers. And it's, by the end, it's so powerful. It's beautifully shot in great green and blue colours um, that turn kind of autumnal towards the end. And in the last scene, very autumnal. Um, really powerful film. As I say, I've just um, literally watched it again. A beautiful package. They uh, indicate often do these little box sets for individual films. So you've got like a book in them. See what I mean about the blues? With essays, interviews with directors and stuff. The extras are always excellent. Um, this one's got a poster in which is the original poster which I really must get framed because I've got a collection of original cinema posters as well but they're just reproductions of original artwork so I really like these indicators I've got a few with indicators really big box sets like all the hammer ones I've got I'll probably do a video on them but yeah, great UK label, great, great film. Um, I'd recommend you watch it. Um, another great UK label, Second Sight, who do similar sized little box sets, but this one's Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, which was Peter Cushing and Hammer's last Frankenstein film. Really underrated little film. I think, is it David Prowse plays the monster in this? Definitely played in the, the Hammer Frankenstein without Peter Cushion before he, um, which is a terrible film that I won't buy. I've got the previous Blu ray release of this from, I want to say, Lion's Gate. And Second Side of Usually is this and The Mummy, which I've also got the previous Blu ray release of, but I will be buying because it's Hammer, you know. <coughs> uh, but yeah, new extras on this little booklet again. I think art cards. Yeah, art cards really, which I always find a bit pointless. But Second Sight are another great UK label. I've got another of their releases which I watched last weekend. Um, Dog Soldiers from what year was it originally released? 2002 ish. And I was one of Five people opening day to watch this in the cinema, in my local cinema at the time. Great werewolf movie, great like squaddy movie about soldiers battling werewolves. I don't think the director, apart from The Descent, which was the film after this, has lived up to his early promise, shall we say. And he was a local boy, well, Newcastle, but I think he shot his first short film in Cumbria Art College, when I was studying major at the time, so I met him at the time, briefly, 
we had a conversation in a pub. Yeah, but um, of those five people on opening day in the cinema, two of them were my friends. So it was quite a cool little movie at the time. It's grown in reputation over the years. It's a nice box set, especially because they had access to the original Cinema Negative, which the previous American release from Shout Factory didn't. So this looks really good. And this is the 4K box set. Again, like, you get the Blu-ray, the 4K, I think, is it the DVD as well? Let's have a look. So that's the package with the discs. I oh, just the Blu-ray and the 4K. But the 4K looks really good, even though it was low budget and shot. You know, with minimal lighting and stuff. Looks really good. Um, little booklet with SEAs and production drawings and stuff. Art cards again. But yeah, it's probably the, one of the best modern werewolf movies that's out there. I'd, I'd also in include Ginger Snaps, which is a, a great one. And the French one with Mark Dacascos, but the Hood of the Wolf, which is based on a true story. Um, this from 88 Films, Killer's Moon, which I briefly mentioned in um, The Art of Nasty book, or well, the book about video nasties, that was shot in Armathwaite Hotel, which is literally six miles up the road from me. And I said, I've been to weddings and stuff, and um, I've reenacted the scene with Nana Moon from EastEnders from the end, who kind of disappears halfway through the film and then there's a reveal shot at the end. But yeah, it's like a low, really, I mean, there's a, even a three-legged dog and a painted backdrop, backdrop of a moon that looks so cheap in this. I'd love to, but I can't wait to watch it on Blu-ray because it's going to show all those, like, you know, some of it was literally shot in a garage. Um, but directed by Alan Birkinshaw, who is the brother of Faye Weldon, Phil Weldon, the famous feminist writer, who is uncredited as a script writer on this. And when you listen to some of the lines, huh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a bad film, but, it, but it's, it's pure trash, but I really enjoy it. It's kind of like about four escaped lunatics from a lunatic asylum who've been given an experimental drug, so sort of shades of clockwork orange. Um, that basically makes them think they're in a dream so they can get away with what they want and a, a busload of skilled girls on a trip to the Lake District break, break down and they're terrorising. Um, yeah, it's pure trash but my god it makes me laugh. I'm a, another from 88 films, uh, recent release. Charles Bronson and Telly Savalis in Violent City, which is an Italian film. So it's before Bronson kind of resurged with Death Wish and stuff in the early 70s. Um, part of the Policio Teschi, it's hard to say, Policio Teschi genre in Italy that was big in the 70s in Italy, which was influenced by French Connection Dirty Harry. So it's tough cop films, tough crime films. Um, and so Jay Castellari made some of the best ones. Um, this is directed by... Sergio Salima, who also made some excellent spaghetti westerns. Um, but yeah, Bronson and Savalas. Tough Italian cop film. Well, crime film, this is more than a cop film. It's good stuff. I have a really old, poor quality DVD, so it would be good to revisit it on Blu-ray. An absolute classic classic of French crime cinema, Le Samurai by Jean-Pierre Melville. It was a great director. and um, This one's the UK Criterion release with Alain Delon, who's never been cooler than he was in this film, or Hitman. Uh, Pierre Melville's crime films are truly excellent, but I think his masterpiece, which was based on his own experiences, Army of Shadows, which was about the French resistance during World War Two, of which he was part of. So it's a really powerful film, actually. But all his crime films are just fun. They're just brilliant. Pretty dark, existential. Um, and I've got an old 
DVD box set, I think it's Arrow, before they started doing Blu-rays and stuff of Melville's other crime films, uh, Le Circle Rouge, which is, if Michael Mann didn't watch that before he made it, I'll eat the air with a horse, as they say. Um, yeah, but this one wasn't part of that release. So Criterion have always seemed to have, have the rights for this, and it was recently released about three months ago on Criterion. So I eventually got round to getting it because it's just a, it's a brilliantly cool film. It's a brilliantly thoughtful film about crime, about being a hitman, about a man in a tight corner. Um, great performance from Alan Delon as well. Childhood favourite, which I had to get the, and I watched yesterday, I think. And uh, this is the German release, it's Clint Eastwood Firefox. I'm a big fan of espionage and Cold War films. Um, and I've bought this on DVD twice, I think, an American edition and the edition that was released in the UK about 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, I think. But yeah, I've always enjoyed this film. It's basically one long, after the setup, it's one long chase through Russia till, until he steals the Firefox, the plane, the sacred plane. And then it's another chase um an aerial battle actually i quite like both of these woods and um, espionage films this and the Argus sanction they're both great fun they're not major eastwood not um i wouldn't say his best work but they're really enjoyable uh, a couple i've caught from the network sale which is a dvd label in the uk that specializes in vintage tv um they've done a couple of hammer Hammer releases as well, which I've got. But I say I'll probably do an entire video on me Hammer collection. Um, but this was in my Amazon wish list. I want to say for at least fifteen years. And when I say it was dropped in price on the network sale recently, I just got it. It's um, big breadwinner, bre big breadwinner hog. That's hard to say. And it's spin off called Spindor. So it's. Peter Egan, who was probably best known in the UK for sitcom work, like Ever Decreasing Circles. I love him in the less famous BBC Jean Le Carre adaptation, A Perfect Spy, in which he's great. And it's just, it's, it's probably Le Carre's masterpiece, though not my favourite Le Carre. Uh, but yeah, this is quite, a, it was a quite a controversial series, I think, in the 60s about a young modish gangster played by Pete Regan who decides to take on the old East End breed of gangster and I think it's infamous for Egan's character throwing acid in the face of another gangster which apparently garnered loads of complaints in the 60s I can't think of what year this was actually made so this came out in 2007, so it's been on my wish list since then, and I finally got it in this sale. I don't think it's going to tell me what year it was originally shown. 68, and the spin-off was 69. So yeah, I think it garnered quite a reputation in for the violence uh, in the 60s. So I'll get round to that, because it's a five disc set, so it's quite going to be quite long. Um, another I picked up in the network sale, which I remember watching in its original broadcast, which was the 100th anniversary of the Jack the Ripper murders. So I want to say 88, 89. I'd just started secondary school. But it's the Michael Caine version that it was shown in two parts on TV. And it was all me and my friends talked about for days after watching it. And yes, it's got all the conspiracy theories mentions all... Of the suspects, um, and comes um to the William Gull. If you know your Ripper stuff, it comes to the William Gull conclusion, which is, you know, it's poo poo ever since. But so that was mentioned in um, Alamo from Hell as well, which I think he started writing about eighty nine actually, which um. The collective novel novel of From Hell is just superb and comments on conspiracy theory and but it's about Jack the Ripper. The Johnny Depp film bears no resemblance, none. <laughs> but yeah, comes to the same conclusion as oh what's the 
James Mason, Christopher Plummer, Sherlock Holmes film. Let's just come out on DVD. William Gould. Same conclusion, can't remember. And all the Masonic theories. But yeah, this this was great stuff when I was growing up. And it's still good. I've got an old DVD and still great uh, worth a watch. Um books I've picked up these first four I've picked up today, just in charity shops. So I watched well Ray watched Lawrence of Arabia on Blu-ray a few weeks ago. Which was a film I kind of thought was alright when I was a kid, but didn't appreciate much. I appreciated it much more a couple of weeks ago, and just, you know, it is a masterpiece of, like, cinematography and direction. And so this was a pound in a charity shop just before, and I think it's quite, it's meant to be quite dense and stuff. But I want to give it a go, because he was a fascinating guy to Elon. Uh, right, I love growing up in my teens, and I've never read this one. And this made his name, I think, was um, this is Alistair McLean's HMS Ulysses, which, as I say, I think pretty much made his name because it was his first novel. But yeah, I loved his stuff as a kid. So, again, literally a pound. Um, a modern espionage novel that I found out through. The recent Spy Break 125 Best Spy Writers a list they put out on YouTube and on their site. Good podcast as well, by the way. Great site, just great resource. And as I say, I love espionage stories, especially Cold War. The modern stuff, less so. Um, yeah, this is Witchfinder, but it's, I think it encompasses a lot of... I think there's even Lacalia characters mentioned in there. But it's basically about the hunt for moles. Peter writes a character in here who wrote Spy Catcher. Um, I think the guy that wrote it, Andrew Williams, was a producer for News Night and Panorama in the UK. And this was his first or second novel, I think. But only from. When was it first published? 2019. So yeah, it's not that old, but apparently it's a really excellent book, set in the, the 60s. A modern espionage novel that was mentioned on Spybury, and it's got a film connection, as it was written by Teddy Hayes, who wrote Bad Max 2, among other things, um, is I Am Pilgrim. And I remember this being on shelves and stuff, and kind of just, yeah, I don't know, because it's a modern, more modern, I, say I'm, I like Cold War spy fiction more than anything, but yeah, since it's written by the guy that wrote Bad Max 2, I'll give it a shot. Um, I think this was two, 2016 and it says, no, 2012. And apparently he's been writing since, so that's 10 years, the sequel to it. So I'll get around to it at some point, but I think this was literally 50 pence, because you see many of them about, but it's mentioned on, um, as I say, the spy released, 125 best spy authors. Uh, these two, I read one in hospital last week in like a day, and that was this Francis Clifford's The Grove and Square Goodbye, which is a fantastic hostage novel with espionage elements. Uh, Francis Clifford is kind of one of them forgotten authors now, but he was in Burma during World War II and lo uh, led his platoon from back to the British lines through 900, 900 miles of jungle and there's a book about that that he wrote that he didn't want published until after his death which I'm trying to get all of to, uh, to be honest I'm trying to get all of everything he, he wrote after this but yeah I, I, I breezed through this in a day in hospital and it's a um, fantastic thriller that was dreamcasting as a 70s movie in my head so I, I was casting Richard Harris, David Hemmings, Richard Widmark it's a good thriller, really good and grips you with a really good twist at the end. Um, pick these two up off eBay again. Another Clifford book, The Naked Runner, which was made into a film in the sixties with Frank Sinatra, which I've only just managed to find on YouTube. You can't get a DVD or a Blu-ray of it, but I'm going to give the book a go because he said uh, I want to collect all Clifford's books because he he's a, he's a, he was a good writer from the one I've read anyway. Um. He impressed us. 
uh, this was off of eBay as well. Um, the Man Who Sold Death by James Munro, who has another name that's just gone right out of my end. But he wrote Callan, the TV series, which I love, with Edward Woodward, the 60s, early 70s TV series, where Callan works for British intelligence as a hitman. Um, but this was the first of his um, John Craig novels, which I've got a Blu-ray of the film that was made from, I want to say, the second or third novel, called Innocent Bystanders, with um, the great... Just gone right out of my head again. My memory is shocking. Yeah, can't remember. But anyway, Innocent Bystanders. Stanley Baker played John Craig in the film. But yeah, so this is weird because it's got an old Woolworths nine pence sticker on. Just there. And I don't know what that is with a with a chess piece knight on, which was twenty five pence. But I'm keeping them on. But yeah, these are pretty hard to come by. Um James Monroe, and as I say, that was a pseudonym, I think. Or that was his real name, and he wrote Callan under a pseudonym. But I want more of his stuff as well, because I love Callan. Um, yeah, so that's it for my recent pickups, books and films. Um, I just want to say, again, thanks to Jason Arrigan for giving us a shout-out, and thanks to everybody that subscribed, everybody who's watched and commented. It means a lot. Thank you.